As you all may be already aware from your customer requests, the ability to effectively work with REST APIs is becoming more and more critical. REST APIs are becoming a key construct for microservice architectures, data sharing, and to provide content across web and mobile applications. But JSON data, whether it's simple or complex, can be difficult to work with and generally will require some type of coding in order to easily consume it using SQL-based tools. And so your customers or consumers have a few methods to work with JSON today. They could code a solution using Python or any other modern day language and convert it to a format that could be used and consumed with ease. Or they can make use of a web connector SDK and code a solution that may only fit for a single REST API. Or they may want to go back to direct database access, which allowed them to fully use their SQL toolbox, but IT wouldn't necessarily like that. And all of these options that are available today require some form of coding, maintenance, time, and are often considered point solutions. So I'll be going through a few REST APIs today that kind of just highlight a few of the core features of our new autonomous REST connector. Uh, the first one I'd like to show you is just a very classic use case and very uh, familiar with uh, most of you on the phone call today is, is working with the uh, REST APIs using open access. And so I, I have my Postman application up, just allows me to do simple get and post requests to different APIs that I have access to. And the first one actually is a JSDO. Uh, this document essentially describes the metadata and all these services that are available to me as a consumer on my Open Edge database. And you can see here the name of the service is a sports service. This is essentially the default database that many are aware of that comes with Open Access, Open Edge. And so you can see here, we have our first service here is called customer. It has some column names, customer name, country name, address, and so on. And so if, if I'm a consumer of this information, I used to have access directly to the database. How can I start to analyze and use the REST, of REST API using my SQL toolbox? And so what the autonomous REST connector is actually able to do is it can connect directly to that JSDL <clears throat> it can automatically sample the information and parse that out. And what, what actually comes out of that is the schema information. So from that, we have all these different tables that we were able to parse and extract from that JSON document. And with that, we can actually do some very interesting things. Uh, first use case I'd like to highlight is data masking. So if I just perform a simple SQL query to get some of my customer information. I may, my use case here is I may want to expose customer information to both internal and external consumers. To my internal consumers, I may not necessarily need to mask that data because we already have access to this data. But if I'm exposing it to some of my external consumers or third party suppliers, I may want to mask that data. And so the great thing about using the autonomous REST connector in conjunction with Open Edge is the fact that it can take advantage of any ABL code you've written on the application layer. And so if I perform the same SQL query and there is ABL code that was used to mask the data on the fly, you can see that if I provided this REST API to my consumers external to my organization, the data automatically gets masked. So there's a big advantage here <clears throat> in being able to provide SQL tooling and bridging that gap to REST API use. And so the other side is, is reporting. Uh, there may be organizations that could have hundreds or even thousands of BI reports that are actively running on your data. Uh, if we take a look at a single item, so what we're doing here is we're taking a look at item number 54 from our order lines table. And remember, all this data is coming back in, in JSON format. If I go back to Postman and just take a look at what gets returned from my order lines API, you'll see a whole bunch of key value pairs that essentially are all of my orders, uh, all, all the items that have been shipped with each of my orders. And the, the format of this isn't necessarily very complex, but if I'm a business analyst or, or I'm a BI developer, I don't necessarily know how to begin how to analyze this data. So I kind of have to look at a row by row, key value pair by key value pair. And so just to very briefly show you that we're actually able to write SQL 
that gets converted to the API that is connected to, and we're able to automatically parse and extract that information into a relational format. So right now, these are all of my order lines that are associated with item number 54, which is essentially just a canoe. And I want to be able to find out what the average discount is. So if I take a look at item 54 and calculate the average discount, it, it comes to 15.89. So if I already have a set of reports, let's say I have 100 reports for a bunch of different financial analysts and they're trying to find out uh, which items have the highest discount that's being offered by our, our sales associates. And if I'm going through this modernization effort, I want to make sure that those BI reports don't have any downtime so that we can continue to run our business. But you need to be able to bridge that gap between the reporting tools that use SQL and the modernization effort you're going through on the back end where you're converting direct database access to REST API access. So if we have a BI tool that's actually generating the SQL, what I'm doing is I'm performing a join. And I'm performing a join across two different REST API endpoints. That, that's the very specific piece of news here is that I'm going against my, my items REST API and I'm doing a join against my order lines API. I'm able to aggregate that data and determine which of my items have the highest discount. So let's just perform this join. And you'll see my top five, Fins, Leotard, Ski Gloves, Surfboard, and Croquet Mallets have my highest discount. So I went through thousands of different order lines and items, and I was able to aggregate that value out. So if I had a report, I would be able to seamlessly continue to run my business as I go through this modernization effort. Very, very cool. So I have a couple more APIs, and I just want to show you how we kind of build up the process and look at some of these key features. So the second one I want to show you is a public API from the USGS, it's the United States Geological Survey. Uh, what we do here is, James mentioned this intelligent sampling that we have within the autonomous REST connector. And so as we perform a just a big flex star from the features table, we get back about 2000 records because this API has a limit associated with it. We do support paging, but I'm just pulling back the first page of data right now. And so if we take a look at what we were able to create using the intelligence sampling, and so if we take a look at this features table, if we go to this and just run it here, you can see the JSON here, we're starting to get a little bit more of a nested and complex hierarchy of data. And it's a little bit difficult to understand. And one of the more difficult aspects of working with SQL when going against JSON is the fact that everything is inherently a string. Uh, there's no real data types, it's just strings. So you kind of have to infer if you're a BI developer or an application developer, what data type I should be working with. So if we go back to the results of the autonomous REST connector and look at the schema information, uh, our, the autonomous REST connector was, was actually able to extract column names data types and relationships within that nested JSON structure. So you can see we have var chars. We're able to determine doing our sampling te techniques, how long each var char field should be. We have doubles, integers, and so on. So we essentially take out the guesswork for a lot of your consumers of the data and help them with the sampling technique. And so the great thing here is that I can perform a fairly simple join this returns 10 records. It's returning the number of earthquakes that happened in the month of December that, that gave out some type of warning. There's some type of going, there is going to be the possibility of having human or financial laws. And so let me show you how easy this actually is to set up. So if you're a consumer of the autonomous rust connector, this is all you have to do. So let me go to my connections and create a new connection. I've already set up a JDBC connection for the autonomous REST connector. And the only thing you really have to supply is the, the, the driver class and a location to the JAR file. So I'm going to click next and supply this new JDBC URL. And I'll hit finish. If I open up a new SQL editor, I'm going to copy and paste the same SQL that I used for my December endpoint. 
Now I'm going to go against that endpoint I just created. So look at that. In a matter of 30 seconds, I was able to create essentially what would be considered to be a new REST API driver on the fly using a different endpoint. And I was able to return use SQL to return data against the results of that endpoint and look at the results in a tabular or a relational format. So super easy, super cool. Now, not, not every endpoint is as simple as the USGS endpoint. Uh, if we take a look at one more API uh, from SpaceX, just to show you what we're working with, uh, SpaceX is a publicly available API and it returns information about launches, uh, customers, uh, the rockets, the ships, the cores, the payloads, everything you wanted to know about essentially the history of SpaceX gets returned in this API. If we take a look at just a single record that gets returned in this JSON document. It's about 119 lines long. Uh, about 80 records get returned. So you've got hundreds and hundreds of lines. And as we take a look at the results of this API, you can see that there is a lot of hierarchical data and nested structures. And so how would you be able to work with this? There are some tools on the market today. Some are free, some are paid for that can actually convert JSON to a format that can be used within with SQL. But one of the biggest issues with that is that it flattens out the data. Your consumers and your analysts aren't used to working with flattened data like this. They want relational data. And so as that JSON document gets converted, all this information here is essentially the relationships that were not able to be identified during the parsing and extraction process. So I can't work with this if I'm trying to use SQL because I've lost all the relational data that's available to me. So let's take a look at what the autonomous REST connector was able to do. If we open up our SpaceX launches, you can see how many tables were actually created. Eight different tables we were able to automatically identify using our intelligence sampling to extract that relational data. Now this tool is pretty cool because I can actually show you an entity relationship diagram. And so just to make it a little bit more visual, you can see from that single API call, we were able to extract and also dynamically generate parent and foreign key, primary and foreign key relationships across eight different tables. And just looking at this one, just for a quick example, the launches table is basically our main parent table. And all these are ver various sub tables, our children tables, images, payloads, customers, and chips. You can see that there's a relationship between customers and payloads here using these primary keys. Now, just go a little bit deeper. There are no primary keys in this data. And a lot of Rust APIs necessarily wouldn't have that either. The only primary key really available would be considered to be flight number in the launches table. So what the autonomous rust connector is able to do is dynamically generate these based upon what we're able to discover within the data that gets returned from the API. So to perform that join using that identified relationship, we can see that we are able to find the top SpaceX customers across the payloads and the customer table. And we're aggregating that data based upon payload mass. So we're able to see who are SpaceX's top customers according to payload mass, because I, I assume that they're probably charging based upon mass of the payload that goes up into space. So just very simple technique, very easy to use, simple to submit SQL. We fully support uh, select statements on SQL 92. So you can do joins, you can aggregate data, you can order by, et cetera. Et cetera. And so one more example here is Yelp. And the reason why I wanted to show you Yelp is uh, two situations is that it uses a different form of authentication. Uh, we were using very basic authentication in the previous examples. And we were really only sampling a single API at a time. And in the real world, that's not necessarily what our customers or your customers would do either. So if we take a look at Yelp, we're gonna be going against the categories API, the businesses API and the events API. And so as you saw me, how fast I was able to configure the USGS uh, new driver within about 30 seconds. 
I can do the same thing. So if I'm working with three to 100 different APIs, we actually can use a configuration file as input into our autonomous REST connector. And it's just a very simple format of key value pairs, table name and the associated REST API that I want to go with. So in this instance, I'm going to be intelligently sampling categories, events, and businesses. And so that happens automatically in the background. When I open this up, you'll see that we have various table names. And so you'll see that some tables seem to be duplicated or redundant, but we automatically are able to identify collisions like that and modify what gets generated on the fly as output for table names. Uh, there is a low-code approach to this. You can go into the configuration file and change column names. You're able to change the generated data types along with table names as well. So if something like this happens, if you want to change categories one to categories underscore business, you have full control to do that with our product as well. One great thing about the autonomous rust connector is the fact that it, it allows the push down of filters to the API itself. Uh, in the real world, uh, most APIs support some type of parameterization so that there's some generic form of implementation because you don't always want to get the same data back. You want to parameterize it. And there's always some form of paging generally because you want to be able to control the volume of data that gets consumed by your end users. And so in the SQL world, when we look at parameterization, really we're looking at adding the addition of a where clause. How do I filter out the data that's important to me? So if I, if I run this SQL query, the only thing I'm changing is this business location column and I'm setting it to La Crosse, Wisconsin. So you can see I was getting all the lawyers from Cary, North Carolina. And now with the change of one, one where clause, I'm getting all of the lawyers from La Crosse, Wisconsin. So super awesome examples. Just really wanted to highlight how easy it is to set up the benefits of our intelligence sampling techni techniques to really dynamically generate metadata information about that REST API and also the relational information about that API as well too.